router 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 let's call the whole thing off Hello and welcome back to another Before You Buy, the video where I give you five reasons why you should buy the product on the table today, the RT6600AX router from Synology, and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss. I've already made like a one hour long, full, in-depth, crazy, everything all in review, but in this video I'm going to keep it as short as possible and go by my 5x5. Five five. So let's crack on with number one. That is right, Synology Safe Access. You thought I'd go straight for the hardware, didn't you? You were wrong. Synology Safe Access, I think it wouldn't be an overestimation to say, is pretty much the main reason to buy any Synology router. For those that aren't aware, Synology routers, along with SRM, with lots of little different features and services, include something called Safe Access. Safe Access is this great tool. I've not seen anything rivaled from any other router manufacturer out there that allows you to create intelligent profiles now from that what i mean is it keeps a record of all the connected devices and at the same time you can create profiles for you your partner your kids if you're at work your work colleagues your visitors your different departments you can create profiles within these profiles as devices connect you can go that belongs to you that belongs to you that belongs to you these profiles can have photos they can have identities that works then you can have rules. You can say stuff like, oh, these devices here, they can access social media. Those can't. These accounts here, they can access social media up to a point or a time of day within a schedule. And these devices, such as these ones for my kids, they can use uh, these websites, which are great for homework, but they can only have these websites, which will allow them to play computer games online or to be able to watch Netflix for a certain length of time within a certain time frame and most important of all, these websites and stuff that they go to and the time they're on the internet can be shared across the device. So it's not like they can use their phone and only have a one hour scheduled screen time and then go, ha ha ha, I've moved to another device, I get another hour. No, it's shared across all of them. So if you're running a business, if you're a family that wants to keep track of the websites that are being visited, and more importantly, block the websites that they, you don't want your family or colleagues visiting, then this is a great tool for that. It is a single portal monitoring point. It produces reports. It is insane and it's included with the router. Bear that in mind, a lot of prosumer routers these days, they have rudimentary parental controls and some of them are subscription based, which is insane. So again, safe access is one of hands down the best reasons to buy this router. Next up, 5.9 gigahertz. For those that aren't aware, Although this router is Wi-Fi 6, which is great, and I'm going to give you a bit of a clue, Wi-Fi 6 is not one of the 5x5 in this video, but 5.9 gigahertz is one of the things that sets this router apart from pretty much all the other prosumer routers out there. For those unaware, when you are broadcasting over Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6, the channels and bands and frequencies you use can make a big, big impact. And more fully featured and better component uh, and better wi-fi 6 or wi-fi 5 con uh, components can cover those extra bands and frequencies and one of them is uh the uh, basically the amount of space they take up on each frequency there now there was a frequency 5.9 you had all the little frequencies from uh, all the way through from then it went into four gig uh, four gigahertz five gigahertz six gigahertz and all the way going up now within the five gigahertz band Certain frequencies were reserved, they just are, and it's a case with a lot of things like with the army, emergency services, uh, public service announcements, that sort of stuff, and 5.9 was reserved for transportation authorities for communication. Now, 5.9 is now slowly being opened up. Up until that point, most Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 routers didn't have access to that channel, and it restricted the amount of the larger um, uh, interactions and uh, connections over 160 megahertz. One point, uh, sorry, 5.9 gigahertz being opened up to this router allows another whole band of 160 megahertz, ultimately allowing another 2.4 gigabit per second connection wirelessly to be made available on that channel. So you can have a greater deal of bandwidth and it gives it an edge over most routers that can only report between 5,400 and 6,000 megabits per second total covered bandwidth with this being able to escalate higher, hence the 6,600 in its name. 
Next up, I covered this a lot in my review, but the way USB is handled on Synology routers is mwah, chef's kiss. It is great. There is the option of some supported SIM dongles, and again, we are doing a little bit more further testing on that soon. There's also support of using mobile phones as tethered points to have as failover internet connections or something more long term. We say, a, I haven't got one here, um, a SIM router that you can connect to it to make sure you've got another access point there. But what's really cool is the USB port can be utilized for USB storage, you know, USB flash keys and external drive, whatever you like. And Synology, the NAS manufacturers that have spent decades in NAS, have bestowed a lot of that storage value. You've got File Station, which is so detailed for file sharing, file uh, uh, just storage, playlisting, finding files, um, streaming over the network, map network, drives, and more. Download Station, Multimedia Server, all of these tools that Synology have in their NAS are bestowed on this. And the USB ports on these devices Although, again, it depends on the strength of the connection you're using, USB 2 versus USB 3 in some routers. Nevertheless, USB support on these routers, and particularly this one, the 600AX, with all that increased bandwidth potential on this device, oh my god, mwah, love it. Next up, I had to mention it, didn't I? 2.5 GBE. This system is one of the first, if not the first, Synology product that has 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. And with ISPs these days knocking around with, you know, internet connections greater than a gigabit in a lot of the world, that is going to be good to know. Yes, it is running via a CAT cable there, so you may have to put this in front of an existing modem from your ISP, or you might be fortunate enough to have it coming straight out of a CAT point you've got on your wall. A lot of fiber people have reported that. Nonetheless, this route wrapping 2.5 GBE means that you could have your greater than gigabit internet connection funneling into this and everyone else on the network being able to have a better job of fully saturating their respective one GBEs. Not fully, of course, you've only got two and a half to play with, or, and, but the 2.5 GBE uh, output being utilized as a WAN is still great to know. Alternatively, use it with a NAS, use it with a switch, use a 2.5 GBE switch on that port. That is a greater degree of bandwidth for that other network of devices. Seriously, 2.5 GBE on this. Again, I've got complaints about it that will come up later in the video, but for now, I'm a big fan. And finally, VLAN and kind of the whole way it's handling SSD and complete isolation when you need to. It should be mentioned when Synology said their new router would support VLAN or virtual LAN, that's the ability to create a separate network here that can be used either with existing networks or completely separated, a lot of users, including myself, went, yeah, why, why haven't you got that already? Because most you know, switches have it, and some prosumer routers have it, Synology still hadn't had it up to that point. But <clears throat> the way they've gone about it is to provide you not only the ability to create those virtual LANs, but bind them in quite interesting ways within the system. You can obviously bind them to specific ports if you choose, so you can make sure that this port here that could be used for IP cameras, IoT devices, a specific, you know, hardware network connected for a switch, you can make sure that becomes its own network. What we can also do is bind it to either a custom-made SSID, so its own Wi-Fi connection, or solidify it against an existing SSID if you choose. Now, you can isolate it completely from the network if you choose, which again, IoT, SSD devices, or simple appliances, you may want to do that. But you don't have to do that. That level of control is presented to you in an incredibly easy and user-friendly way. I recommend you check out my review on SRM to see more about that. But ultimately, the way they've handled VLAN creation is what I'm applauding here. Not that it has VLAN, because it's about bloody time, but it's how they've applied it that I really, really like. But these are all the things I liked. Not everything can be perfect. Let me give you five reasons why this device may not float your boat. Let's start with number one. Despite all of my nice words, it really annoys me this device has only got one USB port there. 
don't like it. Really upsets me because with so much potential for that port with having an additional internet connection as a failover, utilizing it with a mobile phone for tethering, utilizing it with other devices like printers or office uh, stationary devices, or using it, of course, for storage, having one port is tremendously limiting, particularly if, you know, like the previous generation, the 60 uh, RT2600 AC, that's got two USB ports. Yes, one of them's USB 2, but it means I could have used that for some non-priority port there. Now, a number of you in my previous video were keen to point out, why didn't you use a splitter adapter? You know, a standard hub opens up more ports, and you're right. I did have a port, I did test one, and the results weren't exactly ideal, notwithstanding that you're sharing a USB port. On top of that, it was either a case of the port I was using not being great for purpose, or it was a question of the system having that USB having an identity which it then had difficulty with in terms of stability when multiple things were connected, such as I was trying to run a tethered phone, my old Pixel 2XL, alongside a storage drive there. And it just didn't seem to be great and certainly something I it didn't seem to be anything I was happy with. I'm going to do additional testing on it, but still nonetheless, I don't feel like I should have to buy an adapter so I can make the most of those USB ports. Only having one on there left me a little disappointed. Talking of singular ports, why is there only one 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port on this? It just, it's almost insulting. The WAN port is one gigabit Ethernet, and these three ports here, or one gigabit ethernet only having the one 2.5 gbe port there for a router that's knocking around at that what three to 350 quid mark it feels like i would hope to see more 2.5 gbe ports to put it into perspective for some testing i had coming up i went out and bought a 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch and this is a 10 gbe and 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch it's unmanaged from d-link and this is £130. Now, again, I appreciate it doesn't have safe access, it doesn't have any of those features, but still nonetheless, I would have expected, given the cost of 2.5 GBE switches, and indeed the ISP routers are knocking around with 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, that Synology would have given me more than one port. The idea that I then have to dedicate this to maybe a WAN means that I can't attach a 2.5G NAS, or if I use it for my NAS, I now can't use it for you know, my ISP, only having one port, forces to me to have to make difficult choices, much like the USB. Now, this is a little bit oblique, but the fact that this router arriving in 2022 isn't Wi-Fi 6E, although it doesn't strictly bother me too much, because I think I have one Wi-Fi 6E device, I think a lot of people that are buying a router now that they want to last for a bunch of years are going to be disappointed by that. A lot of people, when you hear them uh, complaints on you know any kind of forum or social place or Reddit or something like that, when people say, oh, I wish it was 2.5 GB, and then someone's quick to say, well, there aren't lots of 2.5 GB things these days. That's true, but there probably will be in one, two, three years when you still want this device to be relevant. So again, the same applies to Wi-Fi 6E, and although it's got that 5.9 gigahertz support, which is great stuff, that 5.9 is still under what we could be getting from 6E, particularly when 6E starts to talk about the greater bandwidth access there and taking advantage of the 6 gigahertz frequency band. This next one is kind of a minor point because it probably will be irrelevant by the end of the year, maybe even just a few months. But currently, at the time of recording, you can't mesh this router with their own mesh router device you can't connect this to create mesh points with the mr2200 in your home right now now that's because the software srm 1.3 on this has not been made available to the mesh device at the moment so the result is that if you are looking at replacing the rt2600 in your home and you've already got a bunch of these knocking around if you replace your rt2600 which can communicate them with these with this you're going to break your mesh because this can't talk to that yet. It will eventually, but it's just a real shame that this has arrived on the scene with that new software and there isn't a patch update for the mesh point. So hopefully this is a point that will become redundant in a few months. 
And finally, I kind of talked about it earlier on, but the price tag. Let's be honest, the price tag of this device has left a few people to pump the brakes a little bit there. The price tag of, again, between three to 400 of whatever your currency is, your pounds, your euros, your dollars, your whatever, has given people pause for thought. It's no longer a question of, oh, my internet service provider gives me a router for free. Why should I? That argument is largely kind of over, uh, it's redundant now. No, everyone understands you're paying for a premium thing to get premium services. The problem lies when there are routers that have not dissimilar hardware to this, and in some cases better hardware, and again, I'm talking multiple 2.5 GBEs, I'm talking 10 GBE, I'm talking Wi-Fi 6, uh, Wi-Fi 6E, I'm saying all of those things, and they're arriving, in many cases, at a lower price than this. Obviously, it's because Synology prioritizes their software more than their hardware, so one might argue the price tag is made up 60-70% software over hardware, but still nonetheless, it's a big ask, that price tag, when, yes, the software is fantastic, and I've already raised my delight at safe access, there's still no avoiding the fact that in terms of future-proofing and hardware, as you buy more client devices, hardware does still matter. And that price point for this hardware is going to put some users off. But this has been my before you buy, and should you buy the RT6600 AX. Five reasons you should, five reasons you shouldn't. Again, I've done a full hour-long deep dive with this, the software, the mobile app, the services, the works. It should be linked in the description along with a full review and breakdown and review of SRM 1.3, another big, long, interesting video, I hope. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to learn more. Use the free advice section over on Nas Compares linked in the description. And if you want to learn more about this device, I've got a few more videos in the pipeline with this, with testing, and a few little bits and bolts of experiments I'm running. So do subscribe for those. But otherwise, I will see you next time.